Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this month's IQ Academy webinar. Thank you for taking the time out to join us on our bite sized session this month, where we'll be taking a look at incident investigation with Colin Nottage of the Influential Management Group. If you have any uh, questions on today's session, you can send these to an usual way on the questions panel to the right of your screen. If we don't get a chance to cover any of these, we will ensure they are addressed in the follow up materials after the event. We'll also have a short questionnaire that will display at the end of the session today. Please take the time to complete this if you have the chance, as your feedback helps us to keep the Lunch and Learn webinars relevant to your needs. Our upcoming webinar for next month takes a look at the workforce engagement and the evolving role of safety committees with Viv Russell of Longcliffe Quarries Limited. To register or find out more information on this, please visit the IQ event page on the IQ website, and the address for that is just on the bottom of the screen now. Our branches are also running a number of events over the coming months. Details are available on the current slide. For further information, please contact your local branch secretaries. Their contact details are available on the branches page of the IQ website. And I'll now hand you over to Colin. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Colin Nottage. Um, I run a, run a business at uh, IMG, Influential Management Group. And um, I've, been, um, I've been in the industry about, uh, about 35 years. I had about 20 years with a major company in mean, the last 13 or so. I've been running uh, running my own business. But what I've seen, I suppose, in that time is I've, I've seen quite a lot of quite a lot of issues, and also quite a lot of sadness, I suppose, in the industry with things that things that have gone gone wrong. I've been directly involved with four fatal accident investigations in my time, and you know, obviously, nothing. It's very very difficult to to see the positives when these uh, when these things happen. But really, um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of those uh, a little bit later, a little bit later on. But you know, what I want to do is really try and talk about uh, some of the positives that you can get out of these. Uh, these incidents. Now, I'm not sure what your experiences have been when things have gone wrong, but you know, there's there, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's that, that's that's going to be going through going through your head. There's a uh, there's going to be obviously confer concerns for the individuals that are involved. Um, you know, trying to trying to make sure that the person or the people that have been affected are getting you know the right sort of treatment, the right sort of help. And you know, and those things happen. Those things happen straight away. You know, as things move on, you, you possibly can start to feel a little bit exposed. A little bit, a little bit isolated. People distance themselves from you. You know, you, you find sometimes that uh, that your management, uh, you know, above can uh, can sort of move away, trying to put trying to put themselves uh, a little bit further away from the from the from the incident. I so said my my role, you know, when I was working in the major, was to come in to, to come into the uh, to the situation to try and be try and be supportive, try and be try and be of help, and and, and ultimately take the business forward as, a, as as much as possible. You know, people are also going to feel some pressure. There's going to be there's going to be some some, some nervousness. Again, I don't know if you've had the health and safety executive come through the gate. It, it can be quite unnerving. And I suppose you know one of the things I want to try and go over today is that it doesn't have to be like that. And in the incident I'm going to talk about, the HSE were just nothing other than really really supportive. But other things that you're going to do, you're going to start to maybe question you know, what could have been done uh, differently. You know. Blame um, is a is a is a big part of it. You know, you you might be blaming yourself for what uh, you know for what happened. Blaming other individuals. It can be it can be very very difficult to focus in on the positives. And what I want to do is is just uh, is just talk through talk through some of that and and how we can you know maybe try and make a better situation out of uh, you know out of what we got there. Now I'm not saying that we uh, we don't still manage the, the incident. As I say, make sure that the people are cared for. Make sure the scene is secure. You may well take statements, photographs, all that kind of stuff that, that, that happens where the incidents happen. There's going to be investigations that are going to go on. There's going to be quite a bit of work undertaken to try and look at some of the direct, the underlying and the, and the root causes. And really, it's, 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 it's when you, you, know, you start to focus in on those root causes is when, uh, you, know, is when you, can, you can start to get some of the, some of the positives. A few, um, you know, a few years ago, I, um, I was doing some work for, for a company that, that used to basically have railway sidings and they, they used to shunt trains, uh, moving trains around and, and they had a rule, they had a rule in their business that the shunting activity mustn't take place uh, over five miles an hour. Anyway, they were doing their, doing their activities one day and, and one of their trains ran into another train and when, they, um, when they, they looked at it, they found that the train had been going at seven and a half mile an hour. And immediately, you know, people were looking to, to sort of blame the driver, blame the operator. But I just said, well, let's just look at this a little bit differently. Are you saying that's the first time that anybody has ever driven a train over, over five miles an hour? And if, and, if you, and if you're saying yes, then, OK, maybe we do want to look at the individual. But, but in actual fact, you know, the case pro is probably likely that, uh, that over a period of time, five mile an hour became five and a half, five and a half became six, six became seven. And, and I suppose there was this what's called this creeping complacency um, that, 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 that happened on site. And so... 
So in actual fact, when, when you start to look at it, you, and you start to see the benefits that the business got from, uh, from doing that, uh, those, those train maneuvers, then in actual fact, you know, you've, you've, you've got to start looking at management and how management, how people are managing the sites and actually seeing, well, how can we do that a little bit? Uh, how can we do that a little bit better? And so, you know, when we were working with this business, you know, we actually found that, that if you've got, if you've got the rules um, there, then keep them simple, make them straightforward, but, but make sure people, people do stick to them. And if they don't, then you manage it right from the start. The other things you're going to do, you know, things you're going to do is you're going to try and develop through the other we're going to talk about, talk about, so, you know, I've got to, don't, don't, you know, People that are people that are and, um, and um, you know, recently I was, uh, recently I was, uh, um, I've been doing some training with them. They, 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 they had three, they had three major interactions in 2019, and and, um, um, and I was doing and I was doing a number of training sessions around the country, around the country, around the country. Around the country. and, uh, and uh, I just asked a number of times, well, you know, you know give us the names then of the, of, the, of the three people that were injured. And there were very, very few people, very few people in the business were able to do that. Um, you know, the um, people, you know, the people who were directly involved, the people directly, who were affected on the side, affected on the side. Um, you know, it's new business. What happened? But other people around, but other people around the other business, they weren't aware of. They weren't aware of the details. I saw that as a as a as a real shame. You know, one of the colleagues was injured, and not aware of exactly what it is. But also, but also was, you know, the real, real, the real, real opportunity there for the business to, to, to learn more and more and more from the, uh, from the, uh, from the event, event. To, actually, to actually spread the, the positive, spread the, spread the benefit around the, uh, you know, around the business. When things happen directly on site, you know, you do feel it, you do know about it. But how can you, uh, you know, how can you actually uh, learn from, uh, you know, when things happen on other sites? Now, some, some of you, they may say, well, we've only got one site, you know, we've only got one site. How can we apply that? Well. You've got, we've got loads of resources. There's loads of resources. Things like safe quarry. I mean, you know, there's there's alerts that are put out all the time from that um, from that resource. And, and what do we do with that information? You know, and I suppose one of my challenges to you is to say, right, well, let's let's take it. Let's actually let's, let's say, right, pretend this thing's happened on our site. And what would we do about it? How would we um how would we move it forward? Now I um do a lot of driving with my uh, with my job. I'm I'm up and down the country. Spend a lot of time in my car. I listen to uh, I listen to radio a lot, and I also listen to quite a lot of podcasts. And recently, uh, I've listened to one of the podcasts, something along the lines. Of, I don't know if I've got it word for word, but uh, somebody said, you know, the brightest and most informed people in the world would not be able to write a list of things that have not occurred to them. And it made me sit back and think, yeah, you know, that's um, you know, we don't know, we don't know everything to, uh, you know, that 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 could happen, you know. Our, the, the way that we manage, the way that we work on our sites, the way that we behave, is all down to our experiences. And, and everybody's got different experiences in life. The people that uh, maybe, you know, have a car accident for a little period of time after they've had the incident, they, they drive a little bit better, you know, and they've learned from that. Um, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, people that, that have an, an, an incident maybe where they're working at heights, you know, all of a sudden become much, much better at it. And, and you often hear in the radio, you know, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, maybe drugs in, in society, you know, and they turn to people that have had drug addiction to actually become the uh, the, the, the mentors moving forward. And so you've, you've, you've got to have experienced stuff, you know, to, to get the right, um, to get the right results. And, and I suppose when, um, you know, when, when incidents and when accidents happen in our workplace, it, it, it is difficult, but it's also a really, really great time to, to learn and it's a great time to get, um, you know, to get better at what we do. After all, you know, I've got their hindsight, it's 2020 vision. You know, it's so easy to look back at what, um, you know, what has gone in uh, on in, in a particular site, a particular incident and, and say, Christ, wouldn't we have done it differently? And I suppose the, the real challenge is to say, OK, you know, well, let's look at what we do and continually challenge how can we do it better. But also, you know, let's, um, you know, when these things happen, when these incidents happen, let's use that, that as, for, as a great learning experience to make our businesses and make the industry better as a result of, uh, of, of, of incidents that have happened to others, you know, as we continually want to, uh, you know, want to try and try and learn. So what I wanted to do now is, is really just give you, give you a, a few examples of, of, of some of my experiences, some of the, some of the incidents that I've, uh, I've been involved with over the years. And, and the first one happened up in the, up in the north. And I'm, I'm going to try not to talk, um, talk about people in, in individuals and names in individuals, but I was, I was working over in over in Penrith one day, and uh, my phone went off. An incident that happened down in uh, in North Yorkshire. Tragically, a guy a guy had been had been killed. He'd been killed when 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 an, an item dropped on him. And I drove across on the A66, 
and I was thinking long and hard, Christ, how are we gonna how are we gonna deal with this? What's uh, what's gonna happen? And when I turned up on site, a health and safety executive turned up at exactly the same time. An inspector, a guy called called Richard Noble. I, you know, I don't mind mentioning him, and and he was he was superb. You know, it was it was very much, hey, Colin, I'm, I'm I'm really sorry that we're having to meet under these circumstances, and um and let's work together to uh to, you know to make our way or to work our way through this uh through this incident and. And I think that's what you know. That's what I found when I've dealt with that with HSE is that, that if you if you if you if you're there, you know, they're not ogres. And if you, if you're if you're you cooperate with them, that they, they are supportive and they will help uh, help work through the situation. I'd actually built up quite a good relationship with Richard. We've done a couple of events at um, the Scotch Corner with him, and um, and I think you know probably one of the bits of advice I'll give you is is, is make contact with your with your your health and safety. Uh, um, I, the HSE inspector and and you know and talk to them and and uh, and, and build a build a relationship before uh, before an incident that happens you know so that they can work forward positively um, you know if if things do uh, if things do go wrong so anyway this um this 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 incident um, in Yorkshire it was you know it, what had happened is a, is a, a contractor had turned up on site and the and the contractor had turned up in a in a van with the with the company's uh, logo on the side. And he'd got out of the van and he had overalls on with company, um, you know, company logoed up. And and to all intents and purposes, the people on site thought that this individual worked for this company, but it turned out that he didn't. It turned out that he was a subcontractor that was working. I suppose the assumption was that this was a an individual that was working for a big company, and therefore, you know, everything everything must be in place. And as a business, we learnt, you know, we learnt that, that in actual fact, you know, we can't make those assumptions. What we've got to do is we've actually got to, um, you know, we've got to challenge people. You, you get the contractors that you deserve in life and and so having a having a good process in place for vetting the contractors having a good place for inducting them for for managing them when they're on the site and then and then actually challenging how they um you know how they've worked and, and would we use them again i think is a, is a very very important part of the process and it's maybe something that we as a business hadn't been good enough at um you know before that uh, before that event but um but we um you know we did get we did get better as a, as a result we actually found that the emergency procedures on the on the, on the site worked really really well. You know, the um the first aider was there. The first aider was a foreman, and you know, tragically, he had to he had to cradle the guy in his arms um for for an awful long time because it took a long time for the ambulance to get to site. And and one of the reasons for that was because on the notice board the uh the the postcode for the site was slightly wrong. And so so when they called for the emergency services and went through the uh went through the the information off of the uh, the emergency plan the information that was given to the emergency services was just a little bit different and so so it took a while for them to arrive and again that was a that was a learning point you know the, the, the attention to detail is is really really important you know so so you know when you're put in when you're putting plans together you know be really detailed about um about what you want you want people to to do and and make sure that the information is is correct so that um you know when it when it is needed I suppose it's like anything fire extinguishers if they're missing from the uh the fire point and are propping the door open is is that is that a massive issue well well it is when there's a fire and you need that extinguisher to put the fire out or to get yourself to a point of safety you know so so again the attention to detail is really really important another thing that we we found was maybe the aftercare you know in those serious in incidents that we gave as a business to the individuals that were involved wasn't wasn't as good as it could be and 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 so and so as a result of that we as a business made things uh you know made things more robust so again it's just about about trying to learn you know from these uh these incidents now the second one i want to talk about was was happened down in, in kent and, and we were moving um we were moving a hv transformer as a business and we got a we got a HV contractor to come in and do the isolation on the plant, and they found a they found a switch that was in the on position. It was padlocked in the on position. And what they did is they they for some reason okay they cut the padlock off and turned the power off to the transformer. We had a crane waiting there. We picked the transformer up and started to move it. And one of the guys one of the guys noticed that the the transformer was still buzzing. So it was put down very, very gently, and the job was stopped. You know, so so the management and the and the and the guys on the site did exactly the right thing. They stopped the job and picked up the phone, and and uh, we 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 got involved with the with the with the senior management in the area to look at what had gone wrong, what had happened, and and we very very early on decided right, we need to we need to treat this incident not not as a not as a near miss. We need to treat this incident as if people had been killed because. 
people could very, very easily have been killed. You know, so so when these things, when these incidents happen, when your near misses come in, when your unsafe acts or even, your, your, you know, the, the small incidents come in, then, then think about, you know, well, what what could be the the worst case scenario and, and, and let's let's deal with it accordingly. And we found that, um, that in actual fact, what happened is this, this switch had been turned off and it, and it had actually turned off the power, not just to the site, but it had turned off the power to the to the industrial estate where the where the site was based. And a, and a warning had come up in the uh, in the supplier's uh, um, control room that the power had gone down to this industrial estate. And they were able to, to reroute the power and re-energize the system. And that put power back onto the transformer. We thought, Jesus, we haven't, as a business, we haven't managed HV very well here. And we, we actually did a bit of analysis and we had, I don't know, somewhere between six and 700 sites across the UK. And on those sites, we had about 60 sites that had HV uh, equipment. And, and when we found that, that we had a real lack of knowledge of, of, of how HV was managed, we didn't have any uh, appointed people that could do switching. Of the 60 sites, only one of, the, one of the managers knew whether we owned or didn't own the equipment. And so there was a real lack of control. So as a result of that, what we did is, is we actually we actually ended up appointing a, 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 an electrical engineer to, to actually run the, uh, the HV side within the business. And, and so, you know, so we made improvements out of, you know, what could have been a, what could have been a, you know, a tragic event. The last, uh, the last case study I want to talk about was one that was, that was that was really sort of pertinent to me when I was a, when I was a manager. I used to be a quarry manager for for quite a few years, and I was working on a on a site over in in Wales. I was quite fresh, I suppose, out of out of university. I've gone down to uh, to to Wales to to run this site, and I and I to be fair, I thought I knew it all, and I had a bit of a, a bit of an open door approach to health and safety health and safety management. I sort of said to the guys on the site, look, you know, my door is always open. If you've got an issue, if you've got a problem. Then, uh, then open the door and come and come and talk to me about it. And I thought that was the right thing to do. And but, but, but looking back, that's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit selfish of me, really. You know, what was I really saying to the guys? You know, that they've got to come out of their workplace, they've got to come into an environment that I'm comfortable in, and they've got to talk to me about their issue and their problem. Pretty lazy, pretty lazy approach uh, by me. I suppose I had some success. You know, um, you know, the previous manager maybe hadn't been as open. You know, and so I had ten guys, I think it was on site. And maybe six or seven of them, seven or eight of them were happy to come in and talk to me. So I thought it was quite successful. But in actual fact, you know, the, the two guys that, that didn't come through were probably the ones that I needed to spend the most uh, the most time with. And one of these guys was, was a guy called Les. And, and Les ran the COVID plant. And I had, I had quite an interesting uh, relationship with Les. Les, um, I thought Les was a little bit old school. I thought he was a little bit, um, you know, sort of stuck in his ways. He was in his, he was in his mid sixties. I, I thought he moaned quite a bit, and he was, you know, he was a bit stuck in his ways. Our relationship wasn't great, but anyway, Les got to retirement. Les left. Les left the business, and uh, and I put another guy in to run the uh, to run the coating plant. And I put a guy called Gary in, and, Ga- and Gary was, uh, um, was 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 young, was enthusiastic, and um, anyway, after a couple of weeks, my phone went off, and and Gary was on. And he says. Look, Colin, I'm not prepared to start the plants in the way that Les used to start the plant. I'm not prepared to uh, to do that. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, come over and have a look. And I liked Gary, so over I went. And I found that maybe two, three, four weeks previously, I'd had a 65-year-old guy at, I don't know, half past five in the morning. He'd climb up the uh, the plant, this the, the, the COVID plant. And he'd hold onto a beam. He'd reach around. It was about three metres up in the air. He'd reach around this uh, this this pipe, this bitumen pipe that was probably I don't know 70, 80 degrees centigrade uh, on the outside, and, and he used to hit this valve with a hammer, and he didn't hit it every day. He hit it, he hit it because um, uh, he didn't have a problem every day. You know, it may have been it may have been every couple of weeks or once a month, but anyway, the the, the problem was 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 that, that I'd let I'd let Les down because because what I hadn't done is I hadn't gone out into the workplace and I hadn't gone out and found out how he did his job. Yeah, I got involved. I got involved if there was an issue, if there was a problem, if the current plant was broken down. I was straight over there, but but just generally going out and talking to him and asking him how how did he do his job. I hadn't uh, I hadn't really done done enough of that. I let Les down. I'd I'd exposed him a little bit. I want to think about Les as well, okay? Because Les actually let himself down because because in actual fact, what he did is he climbed up that plant. He climbed that three meters up in the air. He reached around that, uh, held onto that beam and reached around that pipe and he hit that, he hit that valve. And if he had, if he had fallen, you know, he could very well have killed himself or seriously injured himself. And, and so he was sort of gambling, I suppose. He was gambling, you know, and he was prepared to risk, you know, 44 years, I think he worked for the business. He was prepared to risk all of that just to keep production going, you know, and it, um, you know, and it was a, it was a wrong call. It was a poor call. 
you know, so Les had let himself down there. But I'll tell you what Les did as well, is he also let his mates down. He let his colleagues down because he did retire and he didn't tell anybody. And and if and if Gary hadn't have had the confidence to pick up the phone and talk to me, then would he have would he have put himself in that same position? Would he have climbed up that plant? Would he have held onto that beam and reached around that pipe and, and got hurt? And I suppose I was lucky in a way as a as a as a manager, okay, because Gary did have the confidence. And and so one of the things I want you or I'd like you to do when you go back into your workplace is that is to think about that. How how open are people to actually to actually you know, sort of come in and talking to you? Or how often do you go out and talk to people? Because because the more time you can spend out in the business talking to people, the more opportunities you're gonna get to actually stop the uh, you know, stop the things that are incidents, um, you know, becoming becoming accidents and 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 hurting people. And so spending that time out in the uh, you know out in the workplace is really really important. So in sort of summary, really, I think you know what we don't want to do is 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 we don't want to portion blame. You know, to be fair, you know, if a if an accident has happened, there's no point in spending time saying, well, you know, it's his fault, it's their fault. You know, the incidents happened. There's a whole series of reasons why it's happened. And so what we want to do as a business is is say, right, well, let's you know let's let's work forward. You know, we don't want accidents. We don't want incidents to happen. But when we do, let's try and get as many positives as we can so that we can make the workplace better. Did the emergency arrangements work well? How did people react under pressure? Have we, as a result of the incident, as a result of the accident, actually been able to make some big improvements? As I mentioned earlier on, you know, the, the HV side of things, you know, as a business, we were we were so much better placed six, 12 months later because of the incident that happened down in Kent because we'd, we'd, we'd learned from it and we'd put things into, uh, you know, we'd put things into place. What extra training do people need? What, what more importantly, what extra training have people had? You know, there tends to be, um, you know, there, there tends to often be when when incidents and when accidents happen, a whole new, no, new load of procedures are put into place. But, you know, but I think one of the things I'd like you to think about is, is say, well, you know, actually challenge, maybe the procedure that we had was good enough, but in actual fact, what we hadn't done is we hadn't, as a business, explained it well enough, and so the people that were up were doing the job, you know, maybe didn't didn't understand it. A lot of times I go out and uh, and look at maintenance activities that people are people are doing, and I just challenge the risk assessments and and just say, you know, what well, a risk assessment, a safe system of work that you've got there, does it actually get followed? Is it good enough for the job that's being done? Could you just pick that document up and rely on it to do the job? And if you can't, um, you know, if you can't say yes to that, then 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 challenge beforehand. So so get out into the uh, get out into the business, go and see how people are doing the uh, doing doing the job, you know, and see see how they can be done better. And even when things are going well, you know, if even when you know you you know everything seems to be going along great, you know, production's good, you know, there's there's the plant's running well. Go out and talk to people and find out. Well, how do you how did you start the plant this morning? Because what you're going to find is that that people cope. You know, people cope with stuff that's going on out there. And, uh, you know, so let's get that let's get that coping out of the business. Challenge your near miss reporting process. You know, and if, um, you know, if you're not getting any near misses in as a business, then then something's not right. You haven't developed a culture. You haven't developed an environment that is, that is, that is right for people to report it. So you, you've got to look at yourself. You've got to look at, well, what could I do better to actually get the guys out of the sharp end to tell us about more about what's going on and when stuff does come in you know treat it seriously it doesn't matter how small the 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 incident may appear to you if, if somebody's taking the time and effort to write it down it's important to them so so get uh, you know do a good investigation you know if we if if, if i hadn't have um if i hadn't have, have, have looked at, at how gary was was doing his job and previously les was doing his job then, then all that would have happened at some point is somebody would have got seriously uh, challenge uh, challenge your investigation to look beyond the people that are directly affected. You know, so so in actual fact, go up your management chain a little bit. That that shunting incident that I spoke about. But in actual fact, the management team had taken all the benefits from from that 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 shunting activity going faster. You know, they've got increased productivity. They've probably got increased pro- profitability. What they hadn't done is they hadn't actually said right these rules. That we've got in place are, are the ones that we want to stick to and they um you know so they they compromise themselves by allowing people to, to break the rules so so just challenge that uh, that process um and ultimately if you do that then you're going to build a better business out of adversity 
good luck out there and i hope you've uh, you've had some benefit from the, the the session that we've done today thank you Thanks, Colin, and uh, thank you to all of those who took the time out to join us today. Colin's contact details are just on screen now if you uh, wanted to get in touch to follow anything up with him. As with the previous sessions, we will be making a recording of the webinar and the slides available for you to access. If you keep an eye out for an email from us uh, next week with the uh, respective links. If you do have a chance, if you can also provide me your feedback of today's session on the questionnaire that will be being displayed shortly. But thanks again for joining us and don't forget to register for our upcoming webinar next month. All details are available on the events page of the IQ website.